few weeks ago, John Tierman, executive director of the MIT Center for International Studies, and one of the center's fellows, Abbas Maleki, co-wrote an article. In their opinion, in order to reach a deal with Iran, Western countries, especially the U.S., should be more friendly and more generous toward the mullahs. Maleki, who was at Harvard for two years and is presently at MIT, is regularly invited to speak at prestigious forums in the U.S., and his articles are published in serious American journals. He gets significant support for his PR campaign in favor of Tehran and its nuclear ambitions. His presence in the U.S., his red carpet treatment by top American universities, his invitations to publicly advocate on behalf of Tehran, reveal a great deal about American appeasement policies toward the Iranian mullahs. Tierman, who considers himself a progressive leftist and is an ardent critic of U.S. foreign policy, has a long record of working with pro-Tehran advocates, but this time Tierman and MIT have gone too far, as Maleki is not just any ordinary lobbyist for the Iranian theocrats. Those of us who know of Maleki's past actions, of his close ties to this irrational, undemocratic regime, ask why such an individual is welcomed at Harvard and MIT. Why is he enabled by American taxpayers' money to lobby for this anti-American Iranian regime? According to his own CV posted on his website, Maleki was a pastor, a member of the Revolutionary Guard, and started his political career as a member of the infamous committee of Tajrish in northern Tehran, which was responsible for the arrest and murder of many Iranians. Maleki's close colleague on this committee was Ruz Bekhani, who was personally involved in many arrests, tortures, and atrocities. Next, Maleki became a senior officer for Mostazafan Boniad, who managed the wealth and properties looted by revolutionaries from the former regime's officials. His ties with the Khomeini regime's economic mafia helped him become director of the crude oil pricing department for the National Iranian Oil Company at the age of 24. In 1989, he became deputy foreign minister, a position he held for eight years. He was soon a prominent member of the office that advised Iranian supreme leader Ali Khamenei on his foreign policy decisions. In 2006, when Ahmadinejad became president and the regime adopted a more confrontational policy toward the West and Israel, and were thus facing the prospect of harsh sanctions, Maleki moved to the U.S. to continue his work for the Iranian regime. He describes this himself as employing a soft public relations policy in the United States in order to influence both public opinion and decision makers. Maleki settled in Boston and joined other former Iranian officials who have become scholars at the best American universities. The most prominent being Mohammad Mahalati, Iran's former ambassador to the UN and a scholar at Yale, Princeton and Columbia universities. In Boston, Mahalati and an American Olga Davidson teamed up to campaign in favor of friendship with the mullahs and created a center called the Ilex Foundation, which hosted Khatami, the former Iranian president, during his 2006 visit to the United States. Khatami's PR trip was designed to balance Ahmadinejad's more radical positions and to prevent the sending of an Iranian nuclear dossier to the UN, which could have caused the imposition of sanctions. Abbas Maleki, advisor to Khamenei, accompanied Khatami, his former president, during the visit. Here we see Maleki with Khatami and also Mahalati. Mahalati and his American supporters, who advocate providing Iranian oil to U.S. corporations, helped Maleki to become a fellow at Harvard. And now Maleki is at MIT. Obviously, America is a land of opportunity, enabling mullah officials to change their mantles to more from high-ranking officials in an oppressive anti-Western regime 
to respected scholars in prestigious American universities whose wisdom and advice are deemed necessary to guide U.S. policymakers in their drive to accommodate the Iranian theocratic regime.